How is it possible that one person can go missing without the trace, let alone three? This is the case of the Springfield Three. Let's step into the cold. The 6th of June 1992 was a day of celebration for Susie Streeter and Stacy McCall. The two friends had graduated from Kickapoo High School in Springfield, Missouri that day and then spent the evening partying with their fellow graduates. Originally, Susie and Stacy had intended to spend the night at a friend's house, but due to a lack of space, they returned to the home of Susie's mother, Cheryl Levitt. Susie and Stacy arrived at the home around 2.15 a.m. Cheryl had attended her daughter's graduation earlier that day and had then spent the evening talking to a friend on the phone and repainting a chest of drawers. That night would be the last night the three women were seen or heard from. Susie and Stacy had intended to continue celebrating their graduation by spending the following day at a water park with friends. Two of Susie and Stacy's friends arrived at Cheryl's house the next morning to determine what time they would meet at the water park. They soon realised that the house was empty. Thinking that the three women had gone out for a walk, the friends left, but not before cleaning up a broken porch light and deleting a message left on an answering machine. When Susie and Stacy failed to show up at the water park, the police were called. The police determined that all of the women's personal belongings, including clothes, cigarettes and handbags, were inside the house. All three of the women owned a car and they were all found parked on the driveway. An untouched graduation cake was in the refrigerator. The women were searched for to no avail. Over the years the police have had very few leads despite having received over 5,000 tips. At the time the women vanished, someone had spotted a green Dodge van in the area, but police had no way of knowing who the van belonged to. Another tip suggested that the women had been killed and buried on a farm in neighbouring Webster County, but a search warrant turned up no evidence. But perhaps the most important lead is one that still needs to be investigated. This lead suggested that the women had been murdered and then buried at the location of a parking garage at nearby Cox South Hospital. That particular parking garage had been under construction when the women went missing. The police have been reluctant to investigate this lead, but a local reporter and investigator, Kathy Baird, took it upon herself to have the parking garage scanned using a micropower impulse radar system. As the results of this scan were interesting, another scan was conducted in 2006, this time with a ground penetrating radar. This scan found three anomalies roughly three feet below the surface of the cement. Two of the anomalies were side by side with the third lying by itself. According to the man who conducted the scan, Rick Norland, the anomalies are consistent with what a grave site would look like. It remains to be seen whether the police will investigate this further. No one knows how or why the women left Cheryl's house. Police have theorised that a single man could be capable of abducting the women, possibly using a ruse to get the women to leave the house. Others believe that more than one man must be involved. Cheryl's son was initially considered a suspect due to the fact that not long before the disappearance he had fallen out with his mother and sister, but he was soon cleared. An ex-boyfriend of Susie's was also a possible suspect because she had reported him to the police for grave robbing. However, many people believe that convicted kidnapper and suspected murderer Robert Cox is responsible for the disappearance. Cox was living in the area at the time the women went missing and Stacy's mother, Janice McCall, had reported that he was working outside Cheryl's home doing underground cable work at the time. Cox was interviewed by the police as part of the investigation but he led police to believe that he had a strong alibi. His former girlfriend has since said she lied to police about Cox's alibi. Cox has spoken to the media several times, saying that he knows that Cheryl, Susie and Stacy are dead and that they were buried near Springfield. Cox has never been charged in connection to the disappearance of the Springfield Three and is currently incarcerated for a separate crime in Texas.
The families of the Springfield Three still have no answers. Cheryl and Susie have since been declared legally dead by relatives, but Stacy's family have no plans to do the same. Janice McCall has created the website OneMissingLink.com, which is a non-profit organisation which aims to help the families of missing persons. A $42,000 reward has been set up for the location and prosecution of whoever is responsible for the disappearance of the Springfield Three. Thank you for watching the very first episode of Into the Cold. If you are interested in cold cases, then look out for the second episode next Saturday.